long time no see everybody i hope you are all having a good summer i am back with a bottoms video and i haven't done one like this before a lot of it was on impulse so the video will seem a bit weird and there's a lot of environmental changes but i'm going to explain everything very well and edit it so it flows the way it needs to flow. I am gonna show you so many cool ideas and I have so many more that didn't go into this video that I'm gonna do, so there's definitely gonna be a part two for this. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna show you how to make these and some skirts. <laughs> so, because it's a bit lengthy, I am gonna go ahead and get started. For the projects in this video, you'll need the following measurements. The circumference of your waist or where you want the bottoms to lay on, so either your waist or your hips. You'll need the measurement of the biggest part of your hips, the circumference of the biggest part of your thigh right below your butt, the length of your legs from underneath your butt down to your ankle, and finally, the length of where you want your bottoms to lay on your crotch. To figure out how many squares you need for the granny square pants, what I did was create one granny square and then measured it. I then used that measurement with the measurements of my legs to figure out how many squares I needed for each leg. For an example, if my legs are 28 inches long from under my butt to my ankles and the granny square came out to be 4.5 to 5 inches, then I would make 6 to 7 squares for one column of the leg, which would be 30 to 35 inches in length. If my leg circumference is 22 inches, then that means I would make 4 squares for the rows which would be 20 inches in width for my pants i did seven rows of four squares which is a total of 28 squares for one leg a total of 56 squares for both legs for my hips i did two rows of seven squares since my hips area is 35 inches seven squares was 35 inches adding the squares for the hips which was 14 squares to my 56 squares for my legs makes a total of 70 squares that i have to crochet also, don't forget this, but make sure to create an extra square because you will need this to create the crotch area on the pants. Make sure to remember that the yarn does stretch, especially when stitched together, so keep that in mind and adjust the sizing by a few inches. For the granny skirt, I did the same thing, except I didn't include the length for my legs. I only did three rows of seven squares, which makes each row 35 inches so it can perfectly fit over my hips. For both projects, after, I decreased on the waist when making the waistband so it can fit perfectly, but you'll see that shortly. Once you figure out what colors you're going to use to create the pants, start with one color and create a slip knot with it. Insert your hook into the slip knot and then chain four. Once you chain four, insert your hook into the first stitch you did on the chain and pull the yarn through both loops, which is a slip stitch to join in the round. Chain 3 and then stretch out the bottom chain to find the center stitch. You're going to be working into the center for the entirety of the first row. Double crochet 2 times into the center and then chain 2. The first chain counts as the first stitch so this beginning section is the only time you'll crochet 2 double crochets instead of 3. After the chain 2, double crochet 3 times into the center, creating a second section. Repeat this 2 more times for a total of 4 sections. Once you finish the four sections, slip stitch into the first chain to close the row. Chain one, cut the yarn and pull through to secure the row. 
Pull the strand in the center in order to make the hole in the center close. Once you've finished, it's time to add your second row and second color. To add a new color, put your hook into one of the chain corners and loop the new color around the hook. All you have to do to add the new color is pull it through and chain three. While you work this round and the following rounds to come, make sure you weave in your ends as you go. I promise you this will save you some time because you will have a lot of ends to weave in later on. To do this, make sure the yarn is tucked to the side using your opposite hand and crochet around it. This traps the yarn inside. For this section, you're going to double crochet two times into that section since the chain counts as one double crochet. After, chain two and add three more double crochets into the same section. This creates a corner to make the piece an actual square. After that, chain one and go straight into the next section with three double crochets. After, chain two like we did before and add three more double crochets into the same section. You're going to repeat this for the next two sections. Once all of the sections are complete, slip stitch into the first chain and chain one. Cut the yarn and pull it to secure. For the third row, insert your hook into the chain two space on one of the corner sections and loop your next color onto the hook. Pull it through and chain three. Add two double crochets into that section and then chain two. After the chain 2, add 3 more double crochets into the same exact section. Chain 1 Here you can see the previous row created a gap in the middle, so what you're going to do is add 3 double crochets into that middle or side section and make sure to weave in your ends as you go. After the three double crochets, chain one and insert three double crochets into the next corner space where the chain two of the previous row is located. Chain two and add three more double crochets into the same space. Repeat this two more times until the row is completed. At the end, slip stitch into the first chain, chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. For the last row of the granny square, I'm using the color I want the majority of the pants to be. Insert your hook into one of the chain two spaces in the corner and loop that color around the hook and pull it through. Chain three and add two double crochets into that corner space. Chain two and add three more double crochets into the same space. After, chain two. 
You'll see now that there's two spaces in the middle or side sections. For both sections, you're going to add three double crochets and then chain one before moving on. In the next corner section, add 3 double crochets and then chain 2. After the chain 2, add 3 more double crochets into the same exact space. chain one and repeat the steps for the rest of the square. I know I chained two right here, but it's actually a chain one. Once you finish the last row, slip stitch into the chain to close the row. Chain one, cut the yarn and pull to secure. If you weaved in the ends as you went along, you can now cut them to get rid of the extra yarn that's hanging off the square. Now your first granny square is complete. Now you just have to make like 70 more to make some pants. Once all of your squares are done, it's time to actually start building the pants. What I did here was organize the squares into three different sections. Two sections were for the pant legs, and one section was for the hip area. You want to organize it in a way that you're going to sew everything together. I also placed the extra crotch square on the middle of the hip section so I can remember where to put it later on. Here's a little diagram of how everything is going to be sewn together. I know it looks a bit chaotic, but the white part represents how you'll sew everything horizontally, and the red part represents how you'll sew everything vertically. You can either sew it together with a darning needle or slip stitch it together. Slip stitching is easier for me, so I just went with that. To slip stitch it together, I just inserted my hook into the front loop of the square closest to me and then into the back loop of the square farthest from me. You don't have to do it this way, but I did it like this just to make sure that the yarn doesn't show on the other side since I'm using a different color. If you're using the same color, it doesn't matter. In some parts, I did go through both loops like normal, in other parts, I went through the front loop and back loop method, so it really doesn't matter, but I'm just letting you know just in case. Once you reach the corner of the square, finish that last slip stitch and then chain one. Cut the yarn and pull to secure. This is what the front should look like, barely a trace of the sewing job. But if you do want it to show, you can just sew the back sides together. Continue to do this for all the squares following the sewing diagram. To sew the corner sections, I just went into each loop next to the middle and then continued on normally. It's a good idea to try on the first section you complete by wrapping it around your thigh to make sure it fits correctly before finishing the entirety of the pants. Once you connect everything, it's time to keep connecting it. What you're going to do is fold the pants in half and then sew it together to make a circular tube your leg can rest inside. Do this for both the legs and the hip part. Your hips need a place to rest too. Here, I'm showing you that I actually added two more squares to my hip section because I thought six squares were enough, but it was too tight. So I added an additional two squares to make it seven squares on each row. This may happen and it's okay. That's why it's a good idea to try it on before connecting everything. Here is a diagram for reference. 
and this is what one of the legs should look like in its circular glory. Once the legs and waist sections are all circular, it's time to connect the three together. And the main star of this section is none other than that extra granny square. The first thing you're going to want to do is connect the granny square to the bottom of the center square on the waist section. Slip stitch it normally like you did everything else, making sure it's aligned corner to corner. I use the front to back loop method here like I did for the other squares as well. Once you reach the end, chain one, cut the yarn and pull to secure. Now you have a little flap for your crotch. The next section might sound complicated, but it's very simple. Just take your time and you'll get it. What you're going to do is take one of the pant legs and align one of the squares with the side of the crotch square. To make this easier, align the seam with the seam on the waist section and then slip stitch around before connecting to the crotch square. You're going to slip stitch from that seam all the way around until you've connected two squares. I have a total of four squares on the circumference of my pant leg, so I will only connect two of them for now. You want to make sure you have at least two that aren't connected because one will have to connect to the crotch square and the other we will have to connect in the back. Here I connected two and then I did a tiny bit of the third square before chaining one, cutting off and pulling to secure. I then went back to the front and began to connect the crotch square with a square from the leg I halfway connected. I made sure to align both corners of the squares and slip stitch them together like normal. And at the end, I chained one, cut the yarn, and pulled to secure. For the second pant leg, I went ahead and started connecting it from the crotch square since it was connected to the other leg already. I started from there and went all the way around to the back of the pants, connecting only two squares like the previous leg. Once both were connected, I turned the pants over to the back. Here you can see that two squares from each leg aren't connected yet. Now it's the time to do so. This is just my method, so whatever method works for you, I recommend you do instead. I first aligned the crotch square before starting with the leg on the right of me so that it can be aligned with all the seams and sit right when I put them on. After, I started to slip stitch from the right leg to the left leg. There were parts where there was extra space and to deal with that I just skipped stitches on the pant leg so that everything can be attached to the waist.
Once everything is connected, it's time to finish the last part of the pants, the waistband. For the waistband, to make everything look a bit neater, I slip stitch one row all around the top. Make sure you do this very loosely so it'll be easier to work into the slip stitches in the next row. Once you reach the end of the row, slip stitch into the first slip stitch and then chain one. For this next row, you're going to do single crochets into every stitch, decreasing on every second stitch. So for the first stitch, you're going to do a regular single crochet. In the second stitch, you're going to yarn over, pull through, and then insert your hook into the third stitch. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. This is a decrease and you're going to do it in every second stitch around the entire row. Once you reach the end of the second row, slip stitch the row closed and then chain one. For the third row, you're going to once again decrease in every second stitch. Here I demonstrate the decreases a lot better, which is again just yarning over and pulling through and then inserting your hook into the third stitch. Then yarning over again and pulling through all three loops on your hook. At the end of the third row, slip stitch it into the first stitch and chain one. For the fourth row, I did regular single crochets all around with no decreases. You can do as many rows as you want to make the waistband as big as you want. I did two rows of regular single crochet. At the end of the last row, slip stitch the row closed, chain one, cut the yarn and pull to secure. Now it's time to weave in all your ends. I used a darning needle and tried to go into three loops three times just to make sure they're secure. Go ahead and have fun with this. Here I'm showing you how to make the drawstring in case you want one for your pants. All you have to do is create a slip knot with the color of your choice and chain 200. This is just a random number I chose but just make sure the length is what you want. At the end of the 200th chain, I chained one more and cut the yarn, pulling to secure. I then take my darning needle and put the chain in the darning needle. and insert the drawstring into my pants with me wearing them. To insert the drawstring, I just go back and forth until it reaches the front. Also, here the pants are crooked because I didn't twist them on correctly, but after you add the drawstring, just tie it and your pants are complete. Once you've figured out what colors you want to use for the granny squares, the first thing you're going to do is create a slip knot and chain four. After you chain four, put your hook into the first stitch from the chain and slip stitch by pulling the yarn through both loops, joining in the round. Then you're going to go ahead and chain three. After you chain three, find where the center of the circle is and insert a double crochet into the middle. You're going to add a total of 16 double crochets into the middle.
After you're finished with the 16 double crochets, you're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the row to close the row. Then you're going to chain one and cut the yarn, pulling it to close the row. You can go ahead and gently pull the yarn sticking out from the middle of the circle so the gap in the middle can close. Now take your hook and insert it into any loop you want. I like to do it close to where I ended the row just so I can weave in my ends as I go. Put the new color of your choice on your hook and pull it through, making it secure in that stitch. Then you're going to chain two. For this row, you're going to add a little puffy effect to the circle. While crocheting, make sure you're weaving in the ends as you crochet by keeping the ends close to the side of the project so that you can crochet around it, which basically traps the yarn in place. Insert the hook into the chain space, yarn over, and pull through, which creates three loops on your hook. Instead of finishing a double crochet, you're going to yarn over again and pull through, making five loops on your hook. Do this once more to get seven loops on your hook. And then once you have seven loops, you're going to yarn over and pull through all seven loops. After that, chain one and start going into the next stitch. Go ahead and do this around the entire row, always ending with seven loops on your hook. After you finish that row, slip stitch to close the row and chain one. Cut the yarn, pull the yarn through the chain to secure and tighten. For the next row with your new color, you're going to go ahead and insert your chain into the open space where you added your chain 1 in the previous row and attach the yarn. Chain 2 and you're ready to begin. What you're going to do is yarn over, insert your hook into the same chain space, pull through 2, yarn over, and insert your hook into the space. Yarn over and pull through two and continue doing this until there is a total of four loops on your hook and four stitches in that one stitch. The chain two you did before counts as a stitch so it's technically five loops that's supposed to be there. After that, yarn over and pull through all loops before chaining two and moving on to the next stitch. In the next stitch, you're going to do the same thing, yarning over and pulling through the space for a total of five loops on the hook and four stitches in one space. Do this for the entire row and at the end, slip stitch to close the row, chain one, cut the yarn and pull to secure. For the next and final row, you're going to attach your new color and chain three. In the same space as the chain, you're going to do a treble crochet. To do this, wrap the yarn around the hook twice, insert your hook into the space, Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two again. And yarn over and pull through the last two loops. So you're basically yarning over and pulling through two loops three times. You're going to add two treble crochets into that space since the chain counts as a third. Mm -hmm. 
In the next stitch, you're going to do three double crochets into that one space. Make sure you're weaving your yarn in as you go. In the next space, after the double crochets, you're going to add three half double crochets. In the next space, go back to the three double crochets. And then in the next, you're going to add three treble crochets. After you finish the three treble stitches, chain two and add three more treble crochets into the same space. There should be a total of six trebles in one space. This creates a corner that creates the square look of the granny squares. After that, you're going to go into the next space and do a double crochet and continue the previous pattern. There should be no chains throughout the row besides the chain you do on the treble crochet parts. Repeat the pattern of treble, double, half double, double, treble until you get to the end of the row. Once you get to the end, you're going to add three more treble crochets into the first space of the row. and then slip stitch the row closed. Chain one, cut the yarn, pull it through, and your square is complete. Now, just do this 13 more times or however many squares you need and you'll be ready to put your skirt together. Here's a little diagram that I put together to show you how to sew the skirt together. The white lines show how to sew the squares together horizontally and the red lines show how to sew the squares together vertically. I hope this makes sense. You can sew it with a darning needle or slip stitch it, which is what I'll be doing in this tutorial. To slip stitch the squares together, make sure that they are lined up corner to corner, the front side of the squares facing each other, so the wrong sides of the squares are facing outwards. That way, you won't see the seam on the outside of the skirt. To slip stitch it together, I just inserted my hook into the front loop of the square closest to me, and then into the back loop of the square farthest from me. This is optional, as I explained this more in depth in the granny square pants section of the video, but just slip stitch all the squares together until you get one giant rectangle. Once it's all slip stitched together, fold it in half with the outside or right side of the skirt on the inside and slip stitch that together to create a tube that can fit around your waist. After that is connected, the last part of the skirt is to create the waistband. For the first row, all you're going to do is slip stitch around the entirety of the top of the skirt to make it a bit neater. I added a stitch marker here to remember where the first stitch was since the yarn was too dark for me to figure it out without the marker. After you finish slip stitching the row, slip stitch into the first slip stitch and then chain two.
For the next row, you're going to half double crochet all around, but with decreases in every second stitch. To decrease, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over again, and pull through. Then insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, and pull through, then pull through all four loops on your hook. Once you reach the end of the row, slip stitch into the first stitch and chain two. For the next two rows, I did half double crochets all around with no decreases. I only decreased for one row, but if you want the waist to be tighter with or without a drawstring, you can do more decreasing to fit your exact size. Once you're done, you're going to do the exact same thing for the bottom of the skirt. Just take out the decreases. So you're going to first slip stitch the entire first row. And then for the second row, you're going to single crochet instead of half double crochet for two to three rows, just to make the bottom of the skirt look neater as well. Once that is complete, slip stitch to end the row. Chain one, cut the yarn and pull to secure. Go to town with weaving your ends. I didn't show it here because the black yarn is difficult to see on camera, but I show how I weave in my ends earlier in the granny square pants section of the video. To make the drawstring, choose a color of your liking and create a slip knot. Insert your hook into the slip knot and chain 200. This number is what I chose, but you can make your drawstring longer or shorter depending on your preference. At the end, chain an extra chain and cut the yarn, pulling to secure. Then put the chain through a darning needle and weave in your new drawstring through the waistband you created for your skirt. Once that's attached, tie your drawstring and your skirt is complete. So this part of the video is a bit jumbled together due to me using essentially the same exact pattern for each of these squares. They all first started with the waistband. To create the waistband, first create a slip knot and chain 10. After chaining 10, you're going to work half double crochets into each stitch until the end of the row. At the end of the row, chain one and turn your work. For this row and the rest of the rows for the waistband, you're going to work half double crochets into the back loop only. This is the front loop and this is the back loop. You're going to only work in the back loop, which will give the waistband a ribbed effect. At the end of the row, chain one and turn your work repeating this pattern until the waistband fits around your waist. On the last row, you're going to slip stitch both ends together by aligning them and inserting your hook into both of both sides. Yarn over and pull through all the loops, then pull through the loop on your hook. Do this all the way until the end of the row.
Set your waistband down and align the slip stitch section in the middle. This is where your skirt seam will be. What you're going to do now is take two stitch markers and add them to the sides of your waistband. These stitch markers indicate where you will need to increase. You need to increase in order for the skirt to fit perfectly on your hips. Once the stitch markers are attached, you're going to chain one and half double crochet all around for the first row. Don't worry about the increases for this first row, you're only adding one half double crochet into each stitch. For this next row, you'll be increasing so the skirt can fit properly. You're going to work normal half double crochets all around until you reach the stitch markers. Once you reach the stitch marker, insert two half double crochets into the stitch where the stitch marker is. Adding two stitches into one stitch will increase your work. Take the stitch marker out and add it to the second half double crochet you did. This will indicate where you will need to increase after you finish the row and flip your work. After this, work normal half double crochets all around until you reach the second stitch marker and increase. Then continue with normal half double crochets until you reach the end of the row. At the end of the row, slip stitch to end, chain 2, and turn your work. You're going to continue this pattern of increasing at the stitch markers until the skirt reaches the thickest part of your hips. If you add any more increases, the skirt will stick out on the side in a weird way, so it's best to stop right at the thickest part of your hips, unless you want it to be a really big skirt. After the last row of increases, you're going to work rows of half double crochet all throughout the skirt to reach the length you desire. I did a total of 13 rows with increases and 22 rows with no increases. To finish the skirt, all you have to do is slip stitch the last row you completed to the first stitch of that row, chain 1, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. Weave in your ends, and you're done! In this skirt, I added random designs that I didn't record, but I will show you how to change colors and add colors in the middle of your project with this fuzzy skirt that I did. To add a new color, all you have to do is loop the new color onto the hook and pull that color through. That loop counts as one chain. Before you continue, you have to look at your waistband slip stitch seam and where it's at to determine how you're going to weave in your ends of your previous color. It's best to weave in everything on one side of the skirt so you won't have ends poking out on the outside of the skirt. If the seam is on the inside, then you need to weave in the ends on the inside, vice versa if the seam is on the outside. For this one, it's on the inside, so I have to bring the ends forward so that I can weave them in from the front. So when I go in with my new color to double crochet the skirt, I crochet under the ends to trap them inside the project. I will do this a couple of times and then cut the ends off.
After that, I can continue doing double crochets with my new color until it's time to change into my next color. Once I reach the area where I want to add a new color, I first loop the new color on my hook and gently twist the hook as I go to insert it into the stitch. I then will yarn over with the new color again and pull it through. In doing this, you should have two loops with the new color and one with the old color. Then you can go ahead and double crochet with the new color as normal. I don't weave in this blue color because I need it for the next row and it's easier to just drop it here instead of adding it again later on. I finish this row with the new color and once I reach the end, I slip stitch to end the row and chain 1, turning my work. After, I start the new row with the same color and do double crochets until I reach the blue color. To switch to the blue, all I do is drop the green color, pick up the blue, and double crochet like normal. That's it, it's super simple and a fun way to make your projects more unique. For the cotton skirt, it uses the same pattern, but instead of chaining 10, I chained 5. The amount of rows were the same as the other skirts. After creating the waistband for this skirt, I did one row of double crochet all around. The stitches I used in this skirt were pretty random, but it ended up coming out pretty cute. At the end of the row, slip stitch to the first chain and chain 1, and then turn your work. For this next row, I added the stitch markers to the sides of the skirt to know where I need to increase. I then went around with the single crochets, making sure to add two single crochets into the stitches where the stitch markers were for the increases. After, I made sure to move the stitch marker to the last increased stitch I did and then continued on with regular single crochets. At the end of the row, slip stitch into the beginning and chain 2 and turn your work. I went back in for the third row with double crochets and continued the pattern of one row double crochet, one row single crochet for a total of three rows. After the three rows of that pattern, which is actually six rows of that pattern, I decided to do three more rows but of only double crochet, making sure to increase where the stitch markers were located. After those three rows, I went in with four rows of single crochets to make the crotch area less visible. The single crochets make tighter holes in the project, so that worked out perfectly for me. After the last row of single crochets, I started a new row and did one row of only double crochet, but this time I did it with no increases since the single crochets helped me reach the thickest part of my hips.
After that one row of double crochets, I chained three and did one row of treble crochets into the front loop only. I went into the front loop only for this because later on I will create another layer for a cute ruffle layer section on the skirt. After the treble crochet row, I chained two and did a row of double crochet. For the double crochet row, make sure to go into the middle of the treble crochets instead of actual loops. There's no rhyme or reason to this, I just thought it would be cool, so that's what I did. I did this for a total of six rows, but you can do it for as long as you want the skirt. I highly apologize about the lighting in this section, but I will explain everything as best as I can. For this part, I went back to where we did the treble crochets into the first loop and decided to use the loops that we didn't crochet into to create a layer where the ruffles on the skirt will go. To do this, I just inserted my hook into one of the empty loops and began to do a total of four rows of single crochet. Here is the completed first row. After each row, make sure to slip stitch chain one and turn your work. Once all the rows are done, it should hang off the skirt a bit like this. For the next row, chain three and insert four to five double crochets into each stitch. Adding a lot of crochets into each stitch will create the cute ruffle look that I'm going for. In some stitches, I added only four double crochets and in others, I added five double crochets. It's really up to you. Once you're finished adding all the ruffles around, I slip stitch into the first stitch in the first ruffle and chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. To end the actual skirt, on the last row, slip stitch into the first stitch of that row, chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. I created the drawstring the same way I did in the granny skirt and the pants sections of the video, but this time I created two drawstrings, one for my waist and one that I can wrap around my leg. For the one to wrap around my leg, I just attached that drawstring to any of the stitches in the front of the skirt and weaved in the ends so it was secure. If you have any questions, please let me know. I know this part of the video was pretty jumbled up and the lighting was really bad, but hopefully I explained everything as accurately as possible. Also, for the leaf details on the skirt, I used a video that I will link in the description box below. Alright, so the first piece I'm showing off is the granny square pants. These took so long, they stressed me out so much, but I got them complete. Hey, hey. I was struggling so bad with these pants. I was like, I don't know how many squares I have to make, even though I was measuring myself like 50 different times. I felt like I didn't make enough squares. I can't explain how much this blue yarn made me annoyed because I already had one skein of it and I thought that that was enough but I ran out so I was like okay I'm gonna go to the store and get some more I found the same exact color and then I was looking I was like do I need to buy two skeins or just one and then I was like just one is fine I ran out of that too Because I made granny square pants, I just had to make a granny square skirt as well. 
this one is okay it's not my favorite um i'm still gonna wear it but i feel like i could have done better with the color scheme going on because i don't like this lime green and how it mixes together with the purple and then this brown is kind of weird the only thing i like is how i chose to do black so it can kind of tone the colors down a little bit but i also don't like the length of it like i kind of wish it was a bit shorter like this but it's not bad for my first granny square skirt this skirt was 100 percent experimental i didn't have any set design for it i was i thought i was going to make pants again with this yarn but i thought that it being a skirt would be a lot better um, if you can see, I was just going through the yarn. I didn't really like this color here, this lime green. So I only used it like once and then I used a little darker version of it here. All of this yarn was in the same exact ball, um, but I just cut and chose what colors I wanted to use because I didn't really like them all. Um, but it turned out pretty cute. This skirt I just adore. I love how soft it is. The yarn that I chose to use was in my closet for about two months now and I wanted to- this whole video I was mainly just experimenting with techniques and yarn that I've never used before so I was like okay I'm gonna use this fuzzy yarn and I'm gonna make some pants but I didn't make pants, I ended up making a skirt and I'm kind of glad I made this into a skirt. And the cool thing that I also tested out was making it reversible in a way. It's not like a reversible flip or anything, but it's reversible. So like if you wanna wear the blue side in the front, you can, but if you wanna wear the green side in the front, you can. And I think these are really cute. Um, I personally like, the green side more and it was making me think that i should make the whole skirt uh green and purple but i like how it changes and stuff i think that's pretty creative this one is probably one of my favorites next to the reversible skirt and that's because of the little small little details that i added here and there um this was inspired by this photo here and then I just added some leaves to like the little straps that I made. And I added the strap here because on that photo it had the straps down, but I thought it would be cute if I just lifted them up here. And then I was like, what if I added these little leaves to the, to the tips of it like I did with my bralette in my past video? And then I added another little chain to make more leaves here. I think this would have been better if I made it a couple of colors and not just one. So like maybe the ruffles could have been a different color or maybe it would have been striped or have this bottom part a different color. But overall, I think it's a lot cuter than I thought it was going to be. I was going to make this a long skirt like the photo, but I didn't have enough yarn and I didn't feel like going to the store. So I think the mini skirt works, you know, it's cute. That is all of the bottoms I made. I hope you enjoyed them and I will see you in the next video. Bye.